a playlist original. All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Back to the Blockbuster Presents Deep Dives with Owen and Gaius. Episode 14, I think. 14. <laughs> 14. Uh, it's kind of cr- it's kind of crazy because I, like, I know we have like a every other week schedule, and then we did have some gaps where uh, – we're like oh we can't do it this week let's do it the following week it feels yeah. it feels weird that we're only on episode 14 because it feels like we've been doing it a lot longer a lot longer than that it really does <laughs> it really does but yeah so we picked some good ones though i think seven seven each has been pretty good i feel like yeah i think so too like so but yeah someone else pointed that out to me on g-roll they're like dude it feels like you've been doing that show much longer and i like, looked at your episode count and it was like oh it's only like 13 it was 13 at the time when you sent me that message yeah. and i was like yeah it really does feel longer but um I mean, it's, it's crazy how spread out every other week can make it seem. Yeah, completely. And, uh, but it's good, too, because it gives us time to like kind of sit with uh, our choice for a little bit and then, you know, pick a movie and then change our minds and pick a movie and change our minds. Um, yeah, exactly. Uh, which is kind of, I guess, kind of happened with this one where I, w- I won't say which one that you uh, suggested in the beginning. Yeah, because I because you're probably gonna use it a little bit on this one. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you gave me one, and I was like, "Oh, that's a really good one," because it's one that we've talked about a lot. And mm-hmm. and then like in the moment, you were watching this particular one that you chose today, and you're like, "No, no, I'm gonna pivot." Yeah, <laughs> I was like, "I really want to talk about this one." <laughs> and then and then you were like, "All right," uh, you kept talking it up. I was like, "Oh, I'm not doing anything right now. I'll just find it and like watch it." And. uh it was funny because you were you were texting like, dude, this movie's like so sick, it's so sick, it's so sick. And I <laughs> and I got to and then I got to a point, like, I mean, it started out really good, but then I was like, I wonder when yeah. is this gonna take a turn? And then like it took a hard left. And I was like, Oh, okay. Hit. Oh yeah. I was like, that is what he it was. hits you. It hits you at a, there's a specific moment where you're like, Okay, I know kind of know where this is going now. <laughs> yeah. So that's when I was like, that's what he was talking about. I, I feel like this is the moment that like, he kept texting me going, like, dude, this movie. <laughs> um but yeah, um, it was one that I had heard of before, and I just never got around to uh, watching it. But I'm glad I did because it was really good and it was fun. Um, but before we get to that, have you watched anything else or caught up on any uh, movies, TV? Yeah, yeah. So I've actually been. Um, I decided to start checking out uh, Suits on Netflix. I, love I actually had never seen it before. Um, <laughs> And it, it was just kind of kept showing up as like number one show and suggested for you. And like, I definitely got into white collar for a little bit. Um, there was a specific time where I was kind of into like those, I guess you'd call it like NBC sort of primetime shows Yeah. where um, like, like a Thursday night kind of show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's the best way that I can describe it. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. So uh, yeah. Um, but honestly, it's been really good. Like the chemistry between the characters is good. There's definitely some um, interesting storylines where it def- definitely makes it feel real. And like sometimes they'll kind of pull out a, a crazy storyline that just kind of changes the show and the trajectory of, of the characters. So uh, it's been pretty good. But there's definitely some cheesy moments. And it's like, yeah, it's kind of like classic, pr- like I said, primetime kind of drama stuff. So um, sometimes the jokes land, sometimes they don't. But overall, I feel like it's a, it's been pretty good. I've been kind of binging it for a little bit. What about you? Yeah, actually, you know, I actually really like that show. The first time I binged it was I was actually sick. And I was like, all right, I got to find something to watch. And it was one of those things yeah. where I was like, all right, I'm just going to watch a couple. And then since I was just at home in bed sick, it was like, all right, what else am I going to do? I just kept it going and just kept watching it. Uh, yeah, it's good. It's I mean, I like the chemistry between the two leads, especially. They were like really good together. Yeah. Um, still blows my mind that Megan Markle was on that because she, she feels yeah, she feels so like crazy. a totally so different person. To seriously, honestly. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, she feels like a totally different person than, the, of course, the woman we know today who, you know, who found her, yes. who found her prince. <laughs> and uh, I just remember when uh that show was wrapping up and she'd already gotten with Harry and like deadline released the story. They're like, Oh, like Megan Markle will not be returning for like the final, like final few episodes of suits. And I was like, (laughs) yeah, I'm I'm not surprised. (laughs) I think, I think she's busy. (laughs) She doesn't need to return to it. Um, But yeah, it's like crazy though. Cause like when I, when I think about it, it's like, I mean, the show has eight seasons and it kind of makes me wonder like, do you think a show like this, if if it kind of like dropped today, would it, I don't think it would get eight seasons because everything's streaming service nowadays. So it's yeah. like, it might get two or three on Netflix, but it, it just doesn't seem like that kind of runtime and like that length really lasts anymore. I don't think so either. I think, but because it, it kind of started where like 
it still mattered to have like a certain amount of seasons and episodes, especially when it comes to like syndication mm -hmm. and all that. Um, yeah. I actually do think a show like that, if it was on a streaming service today, would maybe be three, four seasons, perhaps. Um, it, yeah. it, it kind of went on a lot longer than they probably should have. I mean, I, by the time I finished it, I was like, all right, I mean, not all of this was great. <laughs> like I could have, they could have maybe trimmed some, yeah. trimmed some fat. Um, I mean, at, <laughs> after a certain point, you after eight seasons, you kind of grasp at straws in the writer's room trying to, yeah. <laughs> trying to find finding some new things to do. But I, I think we'll see with something like The Lincoln Lawyer, like that show. Um, I think it's kind of like a similar it, – it's, it's definitely not – it's probably a little bit more gritty. Yeah. But um, we'll kind of see. I think that's probably a good gauge to see, like, how long that's going to last. And if that – Yeah. I don't know if they could do eight seasons of that because it seems like every person in TV now has so many other projects that they're working on. So it's like – you don't really have like one job for 10 years. It seems like anymore it's in the, in the business. It's true that I think most actors prefer the whole, which is why I think a lot of movie stars have been like, okay with doing streaming shows and all that. Cause it's usually like a mm -hmm. eight, 10, 13 episode run. And they can still, they can, they can still do a TV mm -hmm. show or a limited series, but then also film multiple movies if they want to, cause they're, cause they're not tied down to yeah. like, you know, 24. I can't, I can't believe they're, Back in the day, like it used to be like twenty four episodes in the season of network TV. It's insane <laughs> like, to think about. Like they were working hard. That was that must be insane. I mean, even even people like Seinfeld talk about like I can't believe we did that. Yeah, like that was just the norm. And it's crazy. I mean, sitcoms can get away with it a little bit more, where it's like, all right, I can deal with like maybe twenty four episodes of a sitcom because usually there's not like a lot of like serialized storytelling. Like each episode is yeah. kind of like about a different thing, even though the characters' relationships grow from like episode to episode and they evolve but a serialized like tv drama if there's 24 episodes there is definitely like five episodes of filler where like those, where those episodes God, where those yeah. episodes don't matter some of those episodes <laughs> are brutal to get through, yeah so. or it's like uh okay that didn't really like move the plot along it's just kind of there to, to fill up your episode count like i can't believe like yeah. the oc when that show started it was 27 episodes in season one Dude, and, that was I, I remember I, like so much had happened and I was halfway through season one. I was like, this is crazy. Yeah, crazy. yeah. So that's why by the time by the time you get to season two, you're already like burnt out. Like, I think I already watched you're already, like, oh, yeah, yeah. 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 So true. yeah. But I think that's why a lot of actors kind of go towards like I one of the other things that I was watching is um I watched the second season of True Detective. I had I'd seen oh, the yeah, first season. Me about, yeah. Which I absolutely love, but I watched the second one because I mean I I'm a big Colin Farrell fan. Yeah. And um Gosh, like, I, I love the first season because that one is, like, a little bit more focused. In the second, there was so many things going on. I felt like it got a little bit crowded Yeah, with some of the like, – I remember if I looked away for half a second, I would be like, wait, what's <laughs> – What did what I miss? <laughs> what the hell did I miss? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, um, but I think that, like, actors – I mean, it's, it's crazy to see some huge names that love doing those miniseries. Like, I mean – Rachel McAdams was great in that show. Um, she did a great job. Yeah, that, I mean that had the benefit of having a really strong season one, and critics loved it, and they, they got a, got awards attention. So I think it made it easy for people like Colin Farrell, Rachel McAdams, to want to like sign up and like do it because it had you yeah. know, and there was some it had some prestige attached to it a little bit because it wasn't just like a oh yeah general like you know regular TV show. I know some people. Did it win I know some, or something. I can't remember. Uh. Yeah, well, like, yeah, uh, the first season, uh, I think one of few Emmys and Golden Globes, it was like, uh, and that was also a part of the, during the whole, like, Matthew McConaughey, like, renaissance, <laughs> he, like, heyday, hey day. Like, he was, like, making a comeback. That was, like, uh, that was about Dallas Buyers Club. Yeah, too, yeah, right? he had, a, he, it was the beginning of a very, well, like, in the middle of a good run for him, uh, like, doing some more serious work. Um, I do remember people thinking season two wasn't as good as season one. Uh, it wasn't. But, you know. That's kind of hard when you come out the gate with like a first season that's that strong. It's with an absolute banger. Could be. It could be. I mean, I felt that way about Big Little Lies. I mean, when I got through, the, I was like, season. I was like, season one was great. Oh, dude, but season it, one was. So but good then I was worried because I was like, hey, season one is based on the book, and there's no more book. <laughs> so season two is like, but they, they made it up. They bring in. Um, <laughs> Then they bring in Meryl Streep, though. They so did, it's like they, they definitely shot for the. Yeah, they they, shot, <laughs> they were hitting. The <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they went for like the the queen of all things acting and drama, and they got her. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it's always disappointing when like a show has a really good first season, and then you go into that second season, and it's like, oh, what happened? 
Like, did they get new writers? I think the second <laughs> season of something like, like, um, like Mindhunter, when that came out, oh, like, the good. second season of that, I thought was just as good, if not better, than the first season. Yeah, because it was kind of a little bit more established. I wish that we were getting a third season of that, but I never will. will never forgive or understand Netflix for being like, uh, yeah, it's a good show. It was really expensive though, so that's why we're not bringing it back. And then you see all the money they pump into like trash on their uh, streaming service. You're like, oh well, love Island. Oh, yeah, how's there so or like um, how's there money for to handle or something? Yeah, I was yeah. like, how's there enough money for that and not enough money for one more season of Mindhunter? Uh, but yeah, that's their excuse. I know because for- they left it as such a cliffhanger too. Yeah, I mean, David Fincher said because of the the nature of the show, it does require a certain like budget, and he didn't want to make it, you know, on the cheap. You know, this, you have certain vision that you have for it, and yeah. he claimed that yeah. Netflix was like, "Oh, it didn't really, they didn't really see enough return to like want to do it another season." That show felt really popular though; I thought a lot of people liked it. Um, there was, I mean, there was like a petition to bring it back. I remember people like I saw some online where people were like signing a petition or something yeah. to try and give some outreach and and say that they all enjoyed it. Yep. Well, you know, I, I still. I mean, you, you scroll through some of their stuff and are like, yep, no mind hunter, but whatever, yeah, whatever, but whatever crappy movie of the week God. you guys pay for is right here. <laughs> they're, they're still the ghost movie with David. Harbour, yeah. Like, Jesus. I mean, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> how, how could you make that? Like, I wonder how much budget was in that. Like that could have gone to mind. Hunter. <laughs> could have gone straight to mind hunter. Um, other, well, Gosh. other than the movie that you chose, I watched that. And then I got, I got pulled into some Hulu documentary called the perfect husband and i was like someone at work actually so they were like hey you should watch it and they sent me a trailer okay. sent me a trailer for it and the trailer is just basically like this oh is this the guy that was like a pedophile or something yeah but like the trailer makes it seem like all right is this guy just cheats on his wife and i was like i yeah i feel bad for her but that, if that's the hook and then i i don't really want to watch that and they were like no well, you have to like really like watch it and i was like all right and man he it wasn't just him cheating on her he he did a, a number of, <laughs> a number of things and uh, like what he was like well they were together for like they met in college and they were like started dating in college and they had a pretty good relationship but then they broke up and went their separate ways he got like married had two kids and uh then they linked up again kind of later in life he had gotten a divorce and he was sent her a message on facebook it was like oh i was like thinking of you i miss you like let's get together and they got together and they kind of rekindled what they had in college they get married and uh he does these well anyone else would think these are like what did they're like acts of service like oh this guy is great but he would like you know leave like notes on like the coffee like maker be like oh i hope you have like an amazing day or like constantly call her and leave her a voicemail it's like hey thinking of you while i'm yeah. at work uh love you i hope you're having like i hope you're killing it i hope you're like all this like he would just do a lot of that stuff right and her parents were like yeah i thought something was just really strange about it and i was like well, it doesn't seem strange, I guess. But then when you realize what he was he doing behind her yeah. back, he was like being extremely nice to her because he felt like an asshole probably for not only he cheated on her the week they got married, he was sleeping with like oh my God. at least 25 different women in the beginning while they oh uh, my God. while they were married. He gave her an STD on top of that. Jeez. Um, and then uh he was also like uh like a video like like they have a communications academy in like high school and he was in charge of that and he was like the cool young teacher and of course he meets yeah. a 15 year old student and ends up sleeping oh, ends no. up sleeping with her and then, then. yeah and they actually the girl the student actually uh, she's in her early 20s now she is part of the documentary and she actually speaks with the wife at all these different like kind of like seminars and stuff to you know educate people on you know how to deal with something like that you know if you have someone that's doing these things behind your back and uh what it takes to kind of heal and like they actually in a weird way kind of started bonding i guess because there was like this kind of that is so strange shared this like (laughs) but it's like shared trauma of like and like you know this actually story i guess became like a number one true crime podcast that's how it started and oh really uh, yeah and they she actually on the podcast talked to I think maybe five of the women that he slept with. And uh yeah, yo, I, I mean some people need that clarity, right? To move on. Like, you know, they need to like yeah. know all this information. And you know, I she was ripping off a lot of band-aids talking to these women because I mean some of them knew about her, some didn't. 
and and then of course some it was like he would make it seem like oh we're separated uh like i'm oh, not really gosh. happy anymore he and manipulative as hell yeah and how she found out about this like he she gets home and he he's like sitting i guess in the living room and there's like a paper like sitting on the, on the table and she looks down at the paper and it says all she sees is like blah 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 search warrant and then she's like what's going on and he's like oh everything's falling apart everything's falling apart then the cops come he gets arrested and of course since he's such a beloved like teacher everyone thinks that like maybe the student might be lying so she's like you know what everyone's writing stuff on your social media i'm gonna go on your facebook and delete all your social media but before she deletes his social media to help him out she comes across all these messages that he had on facebook and that's how she found out how much he had been cheating on her way before the stuff with the student the student was just like it all comes out yeah um it was like three or four episodes but it was i don't know it was intriguing i mean it was it, intriguing in the way where it's great that she found a way to get empowered and cope like with and it, cope with it yeah. yeah um and but you know she you know she was made to feel like an idiot because she had she thought she had one life and it definitely wasn't what she thought it was and that has, yeah. to, has to be crazy when you're with someone that long like i mean they had a history in college and then like have like a 10-year marriage and she was like i realized that all 10 years of that was a lie and i that was like yeah the thing that kind of hit that's crazy i, I mean i love the i love the true crime and, the, and i saw the commercial for it as well too and i i thought that there was going to be something like he murdered somebody yeah that was going to be too, actually. <laughs> I, I thought that there was going to be like a little bit more than that i mean yeah it sucks that i mean that's that's crazy 10 years of lies and yeah whatever 30 different women like that's crazy but i the way that i i read the advertisement was it was like a lot worse than that yeah i and i guess uh <laughs> a food for thought if your uh spouse or significant other is leaving like a bunch of notes on the coffee makers and sending you multiple voicemails about how special you are they might be cheating on you i don't know <laughs> that, that, yeah, constant words of affirmation if they're they, telling you they love you yeah. then maybe they're cheating they on you. might be cheating on you oh, God, that's a horrible message <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna make every every woman look at their husband sideways like uh why, yeah. why are you being so nice <laughs> gosh that's so terrible um yeah but yeah um, oh god and i also watched uh scream six again because i have it on uh 4k now and nice that was a fun little revisit still hits still enjoyed it uh yeah you know really fun movie oh and i forgot oh yeah i also saw barbie that's more that's important i saw that on uh yeah on thursday What'd night you think? thursday night at a very packed packed theater it's completely sold out yeah. uh i don't think, i don't know if you saw it but it made 162 million dollars this weekend uh Crazy. which is insane that's like comic book movie opening weekend money <laughs> um <coughs> it's hilarious i mean yeah. there's like it's like a phenomenon like this and oppenheimer i don't know why there's such a social media craze like memes are about it and like all this crazy like social commentary is, is is about it I, I i wonder what sparked it i mean I, I do you think it was just that good of a marketing campaign yeah i, th- I mean people are obsessed with it well i think what ended up happening in the beginning is when the movies were like a- announcing new members that are being added to the cast for some reason it was either like if barbie announced like a new person was in the movie oppenheimer almost a day later was like oh this other person's gonna be in the movie like they were almost doing their like cast editions like like a back battle. to back, and then, yeah, back and, and, then and then it almost seemed because they're both casts are so like big. There's like, a lot of people in the movies. It was like okay, everyone in Hollywood is either in Barbie or Oppenheimer, <laughs> and, and like that. Yeah. So it kind of started with that, and then I think them coming out on the same day because they're so different became. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I guess in the beginning, almost like oh, like a like almost like a fight, like a duel between the two movies. But then like the last yeah. the last two weeks, so it became more of like a groundswell of like hey, like. The reviews are great for both movies like they both should do well so it's almost like it became like let's support e- both of these movies instead of just throwing our weight yeah, behind one almost all the memes are about seeing them in the same day right like at the same time like, like the schedule of how you're gonna how you're supposed to go see it yeah i guess amc said they had like twenty thousand members of their stubs uh subscription service that actually bought uh tickets for both movies on the same day and yeah, uh, yeah, and that's crazy. Here, I mean, I, we're seeing we're seeing Oppenheimer tomorrow uh, as of this recording because we're recording on Monday. Um, I'm so excited. I'm trying to think like if <laughs> I don't know if I could double feature that. I don't know if I would want Oppenheimer on my mind after, <laughs> as I go into Barbie, or if I would want Barbie on my mind as I was going into Oppenheimer. They're just so they're just different. so different. Yeah. <laughs> um, 
Did you like Barbie though? At least was it- yeah, it, it's really good. It's funny. I mean, it's it's a lot smarter. I mean, I, I think like having Greta Gerwig, you knew it would be like a really smart movie and not just like a one joke kind of movie. It it says a lot mm-hmm. about. Uh, and I know this because this has made some guys upset who have reviewed it who think it's too woke. But like what it says about a female's place in the world is, I mean, unfortunately, very right. Even though they poke fun at it and made it, I mean, fun and made you know fun jokes about it. Um, yeah, it it's true though. And like some people think the message is a little heavy handed, but like like America Ferrera has this like monologue in the movie where she basically breaks down what it's like to be a woman and. It's well acted and well written, but my first thought was like, "There's gonna be like a bunch of angry dudes that are gonna be like, oh, why? Oh, of course, like she's put it like yeah. they would they would write it like this, but it wouldn't be written if it wasn't some truth to it, and like women wouldn't have to say that yeah. if uh, There's that a wasn't the case." For it. There was one line I felt really bad laughing at. It was just really hilarious. She goes into the real world uh, and goes to Mattel. And because in like Barbie land, like Barbie can be whatever she wants. She could be a lawyer. She can be an astronaut, you know, and she thinks because yeah. she thinks because Barbie is successful in Barbie land that she's done great things for women in the real world. But when she gets to the real world, she realizes one, she's being objectified as a woman. And two, at Mattel, she's looking for like the female in charge of Mattel. And she's like, oh, who's your CEO? Yeah. And Will Ferrell's like, that's me. And she's like, okay, what about your CFO? And then there's like another guy. And she's like, okay, anybody? And mm-hmm. all these guys are raising their hands. And she's like, is there any woman here with any position that is like noteworthy? And then one of the guys just raises oh his gosh. hand. It raises his hands. He's like, well, I'm a man with no power. Does that make me a woman? And I was completely caught me off guard. Oh. <laughs> uh, but wow. <laughs> really well done and well Damn, placed. They snuck that one in there. Yeah. And Margot Robbie's great. Ryan Gosling is like the real MVP of the movie, though. He steals it completely. Uh, you can just tell that he's having like a really good time. You would. Yeah, he's having a really yeah. good time. And I, but y'all, I'm, you know, of course, you know, I didn't play with Barbies, so I didn't know anything about Barbie Ken like lore. I had no idea that like no one really knows what Ken does. Like everyone knows that Barbie had a dream house and a car, but everyone's like, what does Ken do? And they actually made a lot of jokes on the fact that like Ken is kind of worthless <laughs> compared to her. Yeah. <laughs> and only, it only really exists, you know, because of her and because and, of Barbie. Yeah. And that, and that his only purpose is to serve her. And which is why when he goes into the real world and men are in charge, he's like, Oh, and he has like this kind of awakening and like takes that back to Barbie land to make all the guys like be in charge. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, Cause I was wondering, I only saw the commercial. So like, I honestly didn't really f- know what the story was. So yeah, it's good to hear that. I mean, that's a really cool. That's a really cool perspective. Yeah, I think it's kind of like because I I think we brought it up before when we were together, and I was like, "Hey, I think it looks really good." And you were like, "I can't really tell what it's supposed what to be." Trying <laughs> to say, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> um, but I think once you do see it, you know, it, it, it's kind of obvious. Like, you know, there's a message there, but it's a good one, and it's well written, and it's really funny. Of course, with any comedy, like every joke is not going to land. There were some that didn't, but. Uh, I thought it was really good overall. And the whole ensemble cast is really good. Like everyone is Michael, yeah. Michael Sarah doesn't have a ton to do, but what he does do is really funny in the movie he's, too. He <laughs> always sneaks into some sort of movie and then always gives a great cameo. Yeah. And somehow, and Simu Liu, uh, play, uh, who played Chang Chi, uh, he's really hilarious in the yeah. movie too. He has, uh, most of his stuff with Ryan Gosling is really great. Yeah. Every Issa Rae gets the one movie's F bomb, which he uses like in the best way possible. <laughs> uh no it's, yeah um, don't ruin that for me yeah but yeah it was it was it was good uh i did not expect a 162 million dollar opening weekend that good for them for making that making it seem like an event that's so insane <laughs> yeah i guess when margo that's so insane. i guess when margo robbie tried to pitch it she told warner brothers like she was like hey this is gonna be like jurassic park level successful and i'm pretty sure at the time when they were probably like okay <laughs> and then now they probably called yeah. her called her this weekend like you were right <laughs> like you were yeah. right. She and your bonus, and she's a producer on the project. So yeah, she's a part yeah. of the money. Part of the money. So good for well, her. It's crazy because some of her other some of her other last stuff has hasn't done as well. I mean, like no. Amsterdam didn't do super well. Babylon flopped. Um, and Babylon didn't do well. So it's good to see that. I mean, she acted her chops off in both of those. But yeah. it's like this one. It, it's good to see some uh, box office success. Yeah, and yeah, you know, and also kudos to Greta Gerwig because this is by far the biggest opening weekend 
uh, for a female director, and she'll probably have that record for a very long time. I know that sounds like it's oh, a, yeah. a little shade, but like it's unfortunate, you know. Like we don't have a lot of female directors making a lot of studio movies like this, but hopefully, you know, yeah. like like anytime in Hollywood when something like this is successful, then it opens the door for more women to make movies like this. I mean, Greta Gerwig went from basically borderline like independent filmmaker, and they gave her a hundred and forty five million dollars to make this movie, and she pulled it off. So. Good for her. Pulled it off. Yep. Already a good return on the investment there. Yeah. So. I'm sure they're already thinking it was good sequel. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. <laughs> I can't wait to check it out. Yeah, it, I think you'll enjoy it. It's pretty funny. Um, but the movie you chose is a completely different beast from uh, from Barbie. Very different. <laughs> Very different from Barbie. Yeah. Um, so this, yeah, it's weird because I, um, I stumbled across this movie when I was sort of in um, like a J.J. Abrams sort of phase. Um, and kind of like, I loved his like Star Trek stuff. And, um, I kind of was just like looking through some of the other stuff that he'd done. Um, anything that's like a bad robot production, yeah. you can really tell by the way that it's just filmed, like just the first scene, um, uh, with the, uh, the plane crash. So everyone, I, I chose, uh, for my pick, finally, <laughs> I chose, um, Overlord, <laughs> which is a 2018, uh, horror and war movie. So on the eve of D-Day, American paratroopers drop behind enemy lines to penetrate the walls of a fortified church and destroy a radio transmitter. As the soldiers approach their target, they soon begin to realize that there's more going on in the Nazi-occupied village than a simple military operation. Making their way to an underground lab, the outnumbered men stumble upon a sinister experiment that forces them into a vicious battle against an army of the undead. So, um, I don't really know. Army of the undead doesn't sound as kind of horror as it should it's not really a zombie movie i wouldn't call it like that yeah but um I no I, I really really like this movie i think it's like a great mix of like horror and action i, I think that it's it's I, I don't really see a ton of movies like this where they do have some sort of um chilling moments but it, it mostly is about like the actual action itself so um i think it's super entertaining i love the um the the main guy uh who does what's his name he kind of plays like the lieutenant wyatt russell right russell yeah who was um in yeah so he i mean this is before he did obviously winter soldier um uh captain america so um but it was good to see I, I thought every actor did a great job and there were there was some good chemistry and like i felt for the characters i felt like i um like wanted them to win which was really cool but i just want to hear your your opinion yeah well by the way, guys, this is uh, officially turning into a horror movie podcast. <laughs> we had two horror movies in a row. <laughs> we went from like I can't pick one to like now there's been two, and I guess now there's a couple, and I guess three if you count you know Beck and you know Tucker and Dale from the, earlier in the show's run. Uh, yeah, no, I so I had heard of the movie, and I didn't see it, um, and you would think I would have saw it because it is a horror movie. Um, it's not. It felt like one that kind of came and went in theaters. I think it did decent business, but it wasn't like hugely, hugely successful. Um, no, but I. Uh, I think it made what like it made eighty million or like, something. It says uh, oh. forty one million on a but a uh, thirty eight million dollar budget. So it's like not, not like incredibly successful, but it didn't like outright bomb. It broke even. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it outright bombed. Um, but I uh, heard of it. I just never got around to watching it. And it was funny because it really was like you kept talking it up in the text that you were sending. And like I said, I was like, I, yeah. I have nothing. I mean, I'm not watching anything else. I might as well just watch this and like uh, see, yeah. how, see how it is. And what I thoroughly enjoyed is you get kind of like almost two or three different movies in one where it's uh, yeah. it really starts out where it feels like a legitimate like war film. And for a movie that isn't like the budget's not huge. Um, they did a lot with the money they had that actually, you know, it felt like yeah. uh, a much bigger production than it actually was. So definitely. So that was what intrigued me as the movie kind of first started is like, you know, the horror aspect of it doesn't really sneak in until a little later. And yeah. And then once it does sneak in, it, also works on that level too like it, it, it's able to like continue to function as a war film that, yeah 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 that also happens to have this like horror element in it um and i i think i brought it up to you like it's the whole like kind of like alternate history like kind of revisionist history kind of reminded me of like yeah inglorious bastards a little bit like quentin tarantino s where like yes you know you take a real life event and 
you know, and be like, yo, let's just throw some zombies in this. <laughs> like, you know, like on paper, I want, yeah. I wonder if it sounds ridiculous on paper, but I, th- I would have loved to be in the room when they pitched it. Um, so like, all right, this is how it's going to start. And then well, boom, well, <laughs> and this happens. It, it's crazy. Cause I, I really like, it's funny that you say zombies and like just reading it as undead. Like to me, it didn't really feel like that. Like, I feel like that's a term that I wouldn't have used, especially if I was going to pitch it because I mean, everyone knows about the Nazi experimentation. Right. And I think this was a great take on it. Right. How it was kind of like, I mean, I love the um, sense where the line where he says a thousand year Reich needs a thousand year soldiers. Yep. So it's like that kind of thing. So I, I kind of took it more as like, like lab experiment gone wrong kind of thing rather than like, Oh, we're trying to make zombies like that. Right. That's not really that the way it. that I saw it. That- I, I, I kind of took it. And especially, especially when you see, I mean, I think one of the best horror shots is that girl who's talking when it's just her Ugh, head yeah. and the spine. Like that was definitely yeah. that definitely caught me off guard for a second. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to ask, like, just opening, like, what did you think about the um, uh, paratrooping scene? Like when the plane crashes, oh, that was, sort of like that drop. That was intense. that was it was intense, and that was like another example. Like when I was saying, I was surprised that you know the budget is as light as it is because it that felt like a much bigger moment than you know. 38 million dollars worth of movie you know it really yeah yeah I, definitely i'm not yeah, yeah I, i'm not gonna go outside the box and be like you know it's like saving private Ryan or anything but i mean it was able to kind of no. it was able to i don't want to say fake it but like give you that kind of intensity uh on the cheap without it looking cheap and that was the thing that kind of impressed yeah. me the most it's a really intense opening uh you know and that and that's i think and, i think it's I think it's kind of like, um, I'm trying to think about other movies that do this. I mean, I think J.J. Abrams does it a lot, with especially in stuff like his his interpretation of Star Trek. It's like focusing on one character and sort of their experience throughout the fight. So, right. like, you kind of see it from his You're perspective. You're staying with him the entire time. And so, as, the, as he's falling from the sky trying to pull his parachute, which I was like, oh, my God, that is super nerve-wracking. But, like... I love that, that that perspective, and I think that that is just shows sort of J.J. Abrams' director. Like, I don't know if he – I think he was just a producer, but that's definitely heavily influenced by him. Yeah. For sure. And someone like him has who's a producer, I mean, I'm, I'm sure he didn't, like, uh, interfere too much with Julius Avery, who was uh, the director on this. But I'm sure, like, his – even when you're a producer – it's like when Steven Spielberg produces something, like, their imprint is yeah. still on it some, somewhere. Yep. Um whether that is just you know suggestions made by I mean because like as a producer some producers are very hands on because it's they are the money people and then there are some producers who are like yeah here's your money go make a movie and they're just in name only yeah uh, I imagine that JJ mm-hmm. Abrams is not a in name only kind of producer no I don't think so either <laughs> at all um, but yeah you definitely you definitely his imprint is on this uh, a great deal but kudos to uh, and, Checking Julius Avery on this because I, I this is my first uh, experience with anything that he's done. I've I never heard of him as a, a director or anything director. like that. Yeah, uh, and this was uh, I, a very impressive. What else has he done? I actually haven't really seen it. And most some of the other stuff he's done because it's weird. Because I mean, with with all these different critic sites now, yeah. I mean. It's kind of hard to see the, what the reaction was because it's got 82% on Rotten Tomato, Tomatoes. Rotten yeah. Tomatoes. So obviously, like, there's some good reaction to it. But at, like a 6.6 on IMDb isn't uh, like, like it's crazy. not like yeah. anything to write home about. 74 on Just Watch. Um, so it's like I feel like the reviews were kind of all over the place. Yeah, I think so, too. I think uh, I read a few of the reviews on Rotten Tomatoes uh, and even some of the negative ones. Uh, it seemed like a lot of people who were who got what it was and were really like horror fans really enjoyed it on that level because it wasn't your, ti- mm-hmm. it wasn't your typical horror film, right? It blends this kind of like real life uh, yeah. event and twists it and adds like horror elements to it. I mean, yeah. Uh, and, and like you said, like I'm, I think horror can have like a, a, to- a much different meaning uh, at different aspects of a film. Like, like, like the opening yeah. scene for the other movie is horrific and it's, in its own way, right? <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and and then like to throw in an actual actual horror element, uh, kind of later in the game, uh, it made it different from I think most uh, movies like this. Um, I know that some reviews I uh, read didn't didn't love how excessive it got, especially uh, with the gore towards the, towards end. the end. I mean, but that's I mean. I once it happened, I was like, I was, I was all in once it started because there was some, there is some yeah. pretty good, some you can tell, like, of course, they use like some 
CG and stuff to kind of make this work, but there are some practical effects that are also really, really good in this. Uh, but yeah. but yeah, if you're a horror fan and you are, you're a gore aficionado, you will not be uh, disappointed by the amount of blood. I don't think it was too excessive, though. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I it gets that way towards was... the end where I was like, oh, there's a like it. It felt like there was a lot going on in like those what like what yeah last those twenty last, minutes, like fifteen minutes. <laughs> like wow, this is yeah <laughs> yeah yeah. But um, I think what one of the things that I really liked, especially for something that's a war movie, um, I think it did a really good job of sort of uh, sort of showing the propensity of what being a soldier actually entails, especially right. during wartime. Because it's like when you watch something like um, the Hurt Locker, like Marines are not really. I don't want, I mean, I don't want anyone to come after me, but it's like dispensable. I don't really want to say that necessarily, but it's like the reason that they're throwing tens of thousands of soldiers at this beach is because in order to get the job done, there's going to have to be some blood spilled. And so it's like kind of seeing like the way that these soldiers are interacting. It's like the plane is exploding and they're like, get the hell out of this plane now and do your job. Yeah. Like no one's saying like, no one's freaking out. No one's, it's just like, all right, listen to your orders and get it done. Or else we're going to lose. And so I, I think that they showed that sort of side of, of the war movie. Because, I mean, not all, all, every time, like you, uh, I mean, Full Metal Jacket obviously does it fantastic. Yeah. Saving Private Ryan does a great job. So anytime a war movie can make me sort of reevaluate what it's like to be a soldier and sort of the stuff that they go through and having to change certain directives and be critical thinking and it has to kind of go and, and do all these different things at, at different times and put your life on the line yeah. is... I think I think it did a good job for that, and I, I appreciate that when it comes to a, 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 a movie about war. Yeah, um, I'm gonna piggyback on that in a second. I just want to uh, mention the movies that he did because I have to have it up. Uh, after he did a movie called Son of a Gun in 2014 with Hugh McGregor. After Overlord, he made a movie called Samaritan on it was on Amazon Prime with Sylvester Stallone, mm. and then he oh well, that's like the um. Like a superhero, yeah, well, yeah. he's like a retired superhero. Yeah, that looks awful. And then, <laughs> and, awful. and then it doesn't get any better. He did a movie called The Pope's Exorcist with Russell Crowe. Um, I, oh, I, <laughs> that. I couldn't finish it because I, I really do not understand this, this current phase of Russell Crowe's career where it's just like, I don't know, the funny accent phase. Like his last few movies, he's just been like dabbling with like different strange accents, and this was another one where it was like completely ridiculous and then of course he was like a pope running around on a moped that was like unintentionally funny <laughs> it's like, oh god uh, uh but yeah we're, we're, you're kind of saying yes to everything nowadays yeah i know well julius avery you got overlord overlord was really good um uh what i wanted to piggyback on uh i think what i was impressed the most by is how seriously they wrote the war stuff and the relationship between the characters it it, it wasn't even though we are, you know, you're going to get a film that is going to be mixing in like a ton of like horror element and things are going to get a little out of hand. And of course, like we said, there's like a lot of, you know, blood and viscera towards the end of the movie and some pretty yeah. crazy, uh, you know, practical effects. But the central story, the war part of it was like really well written. That was like uh, the thing that really surprised me is how seriously it was taken and not seriously where it was like, you know, uh, the film is taking it, too too, but it, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. but it, it approached it with a lot more respect than I thought I would expect from a movie like that. And yeah. And, I'm, and like, and you mentioned it when you were texting me, like it makes you care about the characters or I actually was invested. Uh, and every, almost every single character in the movie. Uh, I do. I do remember. Yeah. I do remember after the opening, I was like, wait, who in the main cast am I supposed to pay attention to? Cause I can't tell who got wiped out. <laughs> I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> all right. We lost a lot of people. We got a lot, lost a lot of yeah. people in that opening scene. Um, kind of reminded me of like when the hunger games starts and like, they're like, Oh, there's a lot of people in this movie. Yeah. And they just like immediately oh, lay them all out. Like, Oh, well shit. There we go. <laughs> yep. Um, they all dead. They're all dead. No, I, I think that's good because I think what they, when you have that kind of ensemble and like that kind of cast, you have to be able to either give some people time to shine, but do it in a way where it's not like not each character's overbearing. Like I think each character got a good amount of screen time without making me be like, Oh gosh, what, like it's always about this person or like, cause they made you kind of care about every single story that was going on. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to ask too, like, what did you think of um, the character um, Chloe? So Matilda Olivier and sort of the villain. I mean, I think that that scene just sort of um, <laughs> when you meet, yeah. When you meet captain Wagner, Wagner, whatever you yeah. want to call him, 
he's pretty chilling very, right off the bat very chilling even before things get crazy yeah he yeah he was a very uh really stood out well as a villain like i actually there was kind of moments where i feel like <laughs> like almost like my skin kind of, he made my skin kind of crawl a little bit because he was that kind of got mis- this, like, evil when, his, when he bugs his eyes out and yeah. like smiles and does like that evil grin i'm like oh gosh that's yeah, it's pretty gross. I'm not. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like you don't need much to make you scary, man. Like, no, I thought I thought that was really well done too. I actually was really, I really loved. I guess if we were gonna have a lead. I guess it would be Edward, uh, uh, who's played by uh, Jovan uh, Adipo. I think I pronounced it right. Um, yeah, uh, I thought that was, I thought he was a really good person to lead. I mean, of course, it's like an ensemble, but um, he was a really good person to kind of like latch onto and kind of be. I guess because you're seeing most of this stuff through his eyes for the most part. And yeah, I, I thought he was like a really uh, likable lead. I will, I will say um, this is, it was just such a movie thing that happens, right? There's like, you know, that things can't go right when, uh, when, uh, when Morton chase uh, got shot and he's like dying, which yeah. by the way, the slowest uh, that death scene with him dying was so hard to watch. Because he's yeah. like looking down his chest, and there's just like a gaping hole, like from where he got shot, and he is still alive, and he has like that kind of like last minute like death kind of breath thing that he did, yeah, and, and like then the he rattled. oh, and then he kept saying like I don't want to die. I mean that 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 really got yeah. to, got to me. But then of course, yeah. when he uh, when Edwards like has a syringe, I was like, well, that that can't be a good idea. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some untested like Nazi formula. formula yeah, yeah. yeah. Hey, when bring he, back your friend. Yeah, bring back your friend. And I also wasn't expect like when he did it, and he's like, "Oh shit!" It didn't didn't work. And then I was completely called off guard when he sprung back up. It was like, <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. Um, it's like he just took like an epipen shot or something. Yeah, it's yeah. Like pure adrenaline. And, and, then, <laughs> and then for a moment, you're like, "Oh good, he's back." Like, <laughs> like all right. And they're like, "No, something's gonna go." God, the, cr- like the, the um, Incredible. underneath the skin, like how his blood was kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah, like, uh, God, that pretty gross. Uh, uh, that, yeah, but very well done. I mean, the, the whole point was to make me feel kind of gross, <laughs> uh, yeah, it worked because that transformation was uh, pretty intense, uh, and very difficult to watch. Well, because it goes from like, hey, it, 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 I love how quickly it happens because it goes from, hey, we're trying to save you to. Shoot this motherfucker! Quickly as possible, and kill him. He's not the same person. Kill him now! I yeah. kind of there it was such a quick switch. Um, what, what, but I, I think too, like the thing is, I, I kind of want to ask you about like, um, the way that uh, the private, uh, gosh, what was his name, Edward? Yeah, yeah. um, Jovan Depo. Yeah how he kind of gets into the tower, it was just like coincidence after coincidence. And if this is like the communications tower, like it felt so easy for him to just sneak around. No, <laughs> right, like, right, right. There's no, like, how was he just getting into like, like the inner There was like no real, like. So quickly, like, he, like yeah. <laughs> no real <laughs> explanation. so easy for him. That was like yeah. a good example like, of like the movie just being the movie. <laughs> where it's like, yeah, like, like all right. be dead and then they just, yeah. <laughs> we, I don't know. We, we there, there was a kind of sim- moment like that where i was like wow this is just going from easy to unbelievable now and then he sneaks out again yeah and then he sneaks back like <laughs> there was a little bit of absurdity there yeah i agree um what were your thoughts i mean we were t- you're talking about why russell actually he's the only person in the cast oh yeah well actually the guy who played uh chase he used to be on ages of shield i remember him uh but everyone else kind of felt new to me i'm like I, a lot of the people in the movie i hadn't seen and stuff before but yeah familiar with ryan russell because i did watch uh falcon and the wonder soldier um yeah what did you think of his character because I, I kept i was like likable or not like not really <laughs> um or like kind of toe uh, kind of kind of toes the line like like where it's like a little bit where i couldn't tell if i was like uh are you a lot too much or or this is kind of have to yeah. be in your position uh you know it's it was interesting because like obviously he kind of comes off as like a, a tough ass like a hard ass and he's gonna lead the lead the troop and so you know, I kind of have to follow his orders yeah. um and I don't know I, I think that he does a good job especially towards the end but I mean he obviously sacrifices himself yeah I guess to, there is like some character um, re- redemption right so there. like he has he has a pretty good redeeming arc and I think that you can see how um like they're, they kind of all want the same goal but it starts to kind of blend towards the end of like what their goal actually is like no matter what they need to get inside 
Obviously, right. Joe Von Depo wants to do it to stop this crazy stuff and help out Chloe. Right. Um, and kind of like save the town right. from this experimentation. Whereas it seems like Wyatt Russell is just basically doing it to um, – for the, for the greater good or whatever, whatever their cause is so that their communications can get um, back up. So it's like their, um, their intentions are similar, but obviously for different reasons. And I think he, he can obviously start to see um, his mind change toward the end. Yeah. I actually thought that you could see it too. Uh, Cause I remember at first I was like, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about him. Like, but I guess mm-hmm. he really, it was strictly like the mission and like, he kind of had like one purpose and, uh, but I do, I you know, I do appreciate a good kind of redemption arc, and at least they do give him uh, kind of this like moment of like self sacrifice that actually does redeem the character a bit. Um, but actually, I, yeah, I really, was, yeah, I was sad. Yeah, I really liked how Ryan Russell uh, played him. Like, other than uh, Falcon the Willow Soldier, I haven't really seen him in any. I mean, I know he's done other stuff. Uh, I just haven't really seen him in a lot uh, other than this. And he does. The thing is, his face just kind of looks like he. His dad's a lawyer. <laughs> like, I don't know, just the way that he looks kind of seems like, like I don't know. He kind of gives off that vibe to me. So sometimes that's kind of a hard oh, look to get away from. But I think he does a good job in this. The only other thing I've seen him in, he was in a good Black Mirror episode. Um, but I didn't realize that Joseph Quinn was in this movie. The guy who played um, Eddie in uh, Stranger Things. Oh yeah, that's right. I really, I, I don't even, I don't even remember seeing him. He, he might have been a, a quick death or something yeah. like that. I, I like how you said that. Uh, but, um, Ryan Russell's face looks like his dad's a lawyer because, like, it's funny because in real life, <laughs> in real life, his mom and, and dad is Goldie Hawn and Kurt Russell, uh, which is uh, <laughs> uh, not not a lawyer, but you know, still cool. God, that's crazy. <laughs> but I but didn't he does honestly, have he does have lawyer not, he does have lawyer face though. Like, <laughs> I did not. That totally went over my head. That totally went over my head that he's Kurt Russell's son. Yeah, uh, you know he's oh been he's been he's been mentioned a few times in the whole like celebrity nepo, nepo, ba- baby. nepo baby. You know what? If you're talented, I don't care. I mean, it's like there's yeah. Uh, he's he's proved himself. I'd say yeah. There are a ton of very talented nepo babies. I mean, Jamie Lee Curtis, nepo baby. Her dad was Tony Curtis. Her mom's Janet Lee. Yeah. They're both old Hollywood actors. Lily Collins, I think, is one of the most ridiculous ones too. I'm like, she's not. She's an actor. She's like her dad's yeah. a famous singer. Like, how can she really be a nipple baby? Like, yeah, and saying, she's proved herself. Time they've done that with Allison Williams too. Uh, and I was like, well, her dad's like a news guy. I mean, I understand. Like, it's not like he's an actor. Like Brian Williams is like he works in the news, and I was like, so that's a little different. <laughs> like, you know, he didn't really give her like an acting leg up <laughs> at all. Uh, the one that I can kind of see is something like um, like Rob Lowe's son. Like, I haven't uh, seen that show that they're on together, but, like, can he actually act? I've actually never <laughs> like, seen him in anything, yeah. I'm trying to, I can't, what like, that's that's one where I'm kind of like, did you, you literally just get, like, did your dad write this show for you so that you could become, <laughs> that you could become, become an actor? actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, like, man. That's the only one that I, I'm kind of like, all right, that might have been a little bit of influence there. Um, I know I mentioned the whole, like, uh, Overlord, it kind of feels like, it reminded me of like a little Quentin Tarantino s. Did you kind of get that vibe a little bit too? Uh, when um, you're watching, oh, like a kind of inglorious bastard yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of yeah, style. Yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, not really because like the way that the gore is played out, Tarantino is so over the top. Like even in something like Inglorious Bastards, like in the very end scene when they're shooting machine guns directly into Hitler. Oh yeah, <laughs> it just looks like you're. It's just so ridiculous and so over the top yeah. that, like, I mean, I think something like the scene with, um, the scene in the bar, uh, with Michael Fassbender, like that is the kind of scene that it kind of reminds me of for sure. Right. Um, but like, I don't know. I think that there's a lot of, um, the action in this was a little bit, I thought it was pretty realistic. I thought I, a lot of the time it's very easy to be, um, cliche with like killing soldiers and like yeah. portraying that there's yeah. very easy ways to kind of just be cliche about it and not be kind of realistic. And, um, but I mean, I, I'm all about that. I just like Jackson and I have talked about many times. It's like, <laughs> give me, I want to uh, give me more blood. Give me, the, give me blood and guts. The, give me the blood and, and show me the, show me the death. I'm, I'm, I'm in for it. So, um, <laughs> you, I thought, it, I thought it did a pretty good job. I, I don't know. The only thing I didn't really like was, um, towards the end, um, 
Captain uh, Wagner, Pilo Asback. I can't even pronounce his name. Yeah, I, I was looking to try. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad you. Threw, I'm glad you made the effort. Going on, the Danish, the, the Danish. I don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. So, um, but no, he, he, I don't know if I really liked sort of the half the face oh. on sort of. Um, it reminded me of the um, like Red Hook guy in uh, the first Captain America. Oh yeah, yeah. That, that it kind of just gave me that vibe a little bit, and yeah. I wasn't a huge fan of that, but. I think that any, any everything before that was was really well done. Um, it's just super entertaining. I think it's a it, it doesn't feel too slow. The plot moves along, and like you said, it kind of shifts halfway through. Yeah. B- by the way, dude was scary way before his transformation, so he didn't even really need. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> he didn't really need that. It was just like an added. Like oh, you're already terrifying. Yeah, I thought the yeah yeah it does walk a fine line where the action and the gore and all that it's not. I mean, there's a lot, but it's not too over the top where you almost laugh. Some of it was like kind of like yeah. uncomfortable to watch because it felt so real. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, I thought they did, that, they did do a good job of really balancing uh, the realism of it because it's it, it, it's interesting because it for even though it, it does have this like tonal shift with like the horror aspect of it, it still feels for the most part like a well executed war film first uh, rather than yeah. like a horror movie. Um, mm-hmm. and like the the fact that like the the writer uh I guess two writers on this Billy Ray and Mark L Smith uh kind of came up yeah. with this and really blended these two kind of well, I guess almost like three genres you have like action war and then horror these like three different genres kind of together uh All seam- together. Yeah. seamlessly yeah without it like really one taking over the other and like but the, what, I, what i thought was interesting mm-hmm. though is that the war part of it still plays so well throughout even when the horror elements get added in and honestly i thought the war yeah. stuff is probably stronger like the horror stuff is great i mean horror fans if you haven't seen it you you'll enjoy that stuff but i thought the war aspects of the movie were more intriguing to watch than yeah the, especially in, in like in a like occupied france it's like I, I was going to kind of ask you about this too. It's like the um, like Nazis and that, and them being the enemy. I mean, there was, I mean, decades of time when if you made an action movie, it was the Germans who were the bad guys. guys. And then it's kind of, and then it was the Russians. And so like, there's all these different ways. And so to come out with a Nazi movie in 2018, I think it's like, it's good because they definitely had to try something a little different. Right. Um, I think they kind of used a little bit of the superhero fandom to get like, oh, here's our super soldier syndrome, like serum, Serum, whatever it is. I think they kind of hopped a little bit on the bandwagon there, but it's 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 not easy to make a movie nowadays that hasn't kind of already been done with Nazis because I mean Nazis have been in the enemy in so many movies. So yeah, do you think they did a good job sort of with that time period? Because, um, I mean I I think the stuff in the house is some of my favorite scenes yeah. of like them kind of being quiet and, and kind of explaining some things. And um, gosh, the grandma scaring the shit out of uh, yeah. <laughs> what, what was it? Like my grandma's sick. I was like, Oh my God, yeah. that, that kind of caught me off guard for a second too. But um, I think the dialogue's really good in that scene because it's like, you're not really sure what's going to happen next and you don't know sort of how they're going to play. Yeah. Um, I mean, they they immediately take like the officer hostage. So yeah, like, exactly, yeah. You're like, wow, this kind of like this is kind of easy. Like, it just stumbled directly into your path. Like, you met the right woman, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also love how quickly her neighbor was there to sell her out. Oh yeah. Like, she, <laughs> she's back there and she's like, she's past she's her. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that was like, funny. Oh, bitch. <laughs> oh, didn't yeah. even give her a chance. A chance. Yeah, that was hilarious. Um, actually, the stuff in the house is actually really good, and I I don't want to like make anyone not scare anyone away like saying there's some like slow burn elements to the movie too it doesn't like necessarily like speed through uh some of this stuff it kind of takes time with some of the characters uh which i thought i think that kind of helps to really why they're so likable too because the movie takes moments to really yeah. spend time with them um that could be a tough thing to do and especially if you're a horror fan you you're going in like i'm watching a horror movie you want it to like a lot of people want them to move a little faster, but I appreciate a good yeah. slow burn horror film. And it's not like this is like incredibly slow by any yep. means, but it does take a no, few. No, be- I mean, it does it, a it few beats. Starts to- off with intense that big, yeah, yeah, it's it's action, but it does take a few beats to like calm down for a moment and uh, give you some good develop the story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I actually appreciate uh, 
that aspect of it too. Um, the, the thing, the interesting thing too, because we've seen, like you said, so many different war films, and we've seen Nazis and stuff depicted, you know, in a lot of these movies. Um, I again, a credit to the writers. I thought they did a good job of depicting uh, the time period too, uh, while also kind of mixing in these kind of like a little bit like fantastical elements into the story. There was like, yeah. I don't know, I, I guess I appreciated the there was a level of respect, even though this is like a genre kind of horror film. There was still like a level of respect to the actual event, even though they're of course changing like a lot, you know, history and all that. But yeah. there, there's you know there's still realism within, you know, the changing of how things uh, real actually went. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate that aspect of the movie a lot. I, you know, cause I think some movies like this could have gone either way where they kind of, it's really heavy handed on like almost making it like a joke and not really taking yeah. those elements seriously. And I guess that kind of movie could work too, I guess. Um, but I mm-hmm. very much appreciated this approach because it actually, gave the project a little bit more uh, weight rather than it just being like, you know, yeah. a, a typical like genre horror film. Um, yeah. As, where it's like, Hey, we're just slaughtering zombies and that's the whole point of the movie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you know, like, you know, to have that level of like a, a little bit you know, of respect and, you know, some restraint not to like completely. It's a fine line. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's, it's a momentous moment in history. So it's like, you kind of got to make, got to pay it its respect at yeah. the time. I, I think they did a good job too, it's especially in the time it came out. So like with something like Saving Private Ryan, you see like the nitty gritty of it as they yeah. land on the beach. But I think the coolest shot was, or not the coolest, but like one of the cool shots, the cinematography was great and just showing sort of the scale of the invasion. Right. And like what, like, like you see, when you see all those boats in the water, you're just like, damn, like that is insane. Yeah, yeah. How many people are like, invading this country because of all the terrible things that are happening so um they do a good job because i mean it's not like you need a backstory for that you don't have to explain yeah like all the bad things that the, like why nazis are bad and like, like you don't really have to go <laughs> into like, that which yeah. is kind of nice you're like, like read a, read a book when you have a time <laughs> period, uh, yeah exactly. um i mean i think too like uh just like with the hurt locker like the hurt locker or it's i think something like that does a good job of like you kind of know why they're there yeah with something like Zero Dark Thirty, you have to like kind of explain everything, like yeah. to start. Like you have to give the setting. Whereas this, you're just like, "Yep, it's D Day." Like you don't have to go into it, right? And yeah, I agree with that. And especially you brought up Zero Dark Thirty, it does that does start off as a more like a talky affair where it's like, "All right, we have to explain point A and point B, <laughs> how we and yeah. how we get here." Uh, that's true. I mean, uh, I also think I think war films uh, are really. I mean. I was, yeah, I guess I would say like hard to make because I mean because we have so many of them, right? And mm-hmm. of course, uh, like I said, I would never compare Overlord to Saving Private Ryan, but I would just you know, yeah, uh, <laughs> at all. That's not really the same caliber. <laughs> to, 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 actually, today on its uh, 25th anniversary, I would never. Uh, that, that's what the movie on July 24th, 25 years ago, as we're recording that, I would never do that to Steven Spielberg or. Uh, Oh, is, it, is it really the uh, anniversary? Yeah, of I believe, yeah. So I would never, I would never do, I would never do that. Um, oh. But of course, you know, for a lot of people, that is like the granddaddy of like all war films. I mean, it has, it has probably one of the best. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that scene. I mean, Steven Spielberg did work uh, when it came to the a whole invasion thing and it's how one he depicted that. Yeah, of all time. I mean, yeah. I, I think it's one of the best action scenes of all time. Yeah, I mean, and of course you have other movies like I love Black Hawk Down. Like they just present it the war in different ways. Like you mentioned the Hurt Locker, Full Metal Jacket is a you know another good example too. Um, again, I'm not saying Overlord is in the pantheon of all those great war movies, um, but yeah. it holds its own. I think that's the best way. I, the best way I can put it is, um, given the fact that this is a a genre movie with not a huge budget by you know like most standards. Um, it gets the job done uh, in a really uh, visceral and kind of uh, realistic way uh, where it almost, yeah. where it almost like, I, it feels weird to say fake it, but it can almost, almost like uh, imposter be kind of next to like something like a Saving Private Ryan was like, Hey, not as like, not definitely not as well done as that, but still looks good in comparison to it. Uh, yeah. Given, uh, you know, the limitations of like 
not having a huge budget. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, it's, it's so crazy too. I, I love the topic of war movies. Cause it's like war itself has changed throughout the years. And um, just, it's so different now, sort of the way that we have to battle things. Cause yeah. there's not, I mean, it, the way that the, that war has changed, there's not really like all out assaults on countries and invasions and, and tanks, like, Right. mowing down i mean there kind of is right now with uh, ukraine and russia but we're not a political podcast no, yeah. um, <laughs> but um i think I, I i was gonna say like my favorite type of war movie now is something like the report uh with adam driver and it's just kind of like it's mostly dialogue and espionage and like that kind of thing and yeah. i think that's a really cool way to do something now but to go back and see sort of how war was i think that that's always great and it's it's not honestly not easy to go back and have a different interpretation, especially in like 2018 and 2020. Like, yeah. like that's a tough time to be like, Hey, we're going to make another movie about D day, but it's going to have a little bit of a twist. Yeah. So it's like, cause like we, like we kind of said, it's like, it's been done. Right. I think the, I think the, the reason this does work is because it has the hook, like the, you know, the, well, I, I guess twists, I guess. Right. Like, like this little added element of uh horror in it. And I think that's, uh, horror movies do a really good job of doing that right so like something like overlord you take something like d-day you take a war which is already scary in itself uh you know these these characters are kind of fighting to survive as well like so you're worried about like being in that situation how they might end up losing their lives and then you throw in yeah. this other element this horror element which adds another layer of like danger which is in a much different way like yeah. horror movies are really good at doing that i mean 28 days later kind of reminds me of that in a sense where there you have like the it's this isolation where like it's a completely deserted like you know UK and this guy is seemingly alone yeah. seemingly alone with like a few survivors right so that's already terrifying where you woke you've woken up from this like coma to find out your entire area is pretty much seems like it's been wiped out so that's already yeah frightening in itself scary and, and isolating yeah. and yeah and then you throw in the snarling fucking infected and they weren't really like they weren't really zombies either right not in the traditional sense they were just uh you know infected with like what they would describe as like just rage they were just angry and yeah and but another kind of fresh spin on the like zombie movie right like i know we're not calling like them zombie you want to really call them zombies for this but i guess it's like another spin I really, yeah i i think that like i said they did a good job in, in the in the sense where like I didn't really think of them as zombies. I mean, right. obviously it's, I, I kind of want to ask you too about what your opinion on zombies is. Cause they've been done so many different ways. So it's like, it's such a great way to see, like, I like, I like their take um, yep. on this specific genre. Um, but I always wanted to say like, what do you think is the opinion on how to kill a zombie? Cause I always think it's super interesting where it's like they died once and then they're back to life and you kill them again. Like, but only if you, <laughs> shoot them in the brain like, shoot, like shoot them in the i really head. don't understand sort of like is there a rule book on how to uh like what a zombie needs to survive like i, I don't know I, I feel like that's always intriguing to see how people uh interpret that because i mean in, in my mind the scariest thing about a zombie is something that you really can't kill because it's like i don't know yeah i think well i think in most zombie movies right it's usually like the headshot that usually is what takes them out yeah. i think in some of them they yeah. use you can set them on fire that'll that'll kill them uh I think it's interesting that it's usually the headshot, but you could probably pump them full of bullets, like in the chest, stomach, and they can still like walk around and like still come after you. Yeah. Um, I think uh, so. Zombie. It's interesting because zombie movies. I used to not really love. Like, I appreciate something like Night of the Living Dead because I respect of, I respect it for what it did for in its day when it came out. But I, I've never been frightened by the slow moving, snail pace walking zombie that is like all right all right i so can you're scared of like the, I, the running, world war z kind of zombie. yeah the running snarling like after you <laughs> like uh it's funny because when danny boyle did 28 days later he actually for the people that play the infected he actually got former athletes to play uh those parts because he was like i want them to run like they have played sports like they need to run like quickly and i want their speed to be yeah. terrifying so like 28 days later was i think the first example of having not the traditional zombie where it's like you know slow moving like brains like, like yeah. kind of like that kind of zombie yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then they of course like after 28 days later i think a lot of zombie movies copied that to you know 
various degrees of success, like the Dawn of the Day, Re- Dead remake, their zombies run, yeah. uh, and they're just terrifying. Like you said, like the World War Z zombies are, you know, I think I've actually never really watched Walking Dead, so I don't even know what those zombies are like. I don't know if you. Uh, so those zombies are def. They're kind of like they're slow moving for sure. the The scariest part about The Walking Dead is not the fact that like it's it's the amount of zombies that are coming after you because right. it's like it like one of them you can run away from easily, but the fact that like if you have if there's a huge mass of them, yeah. it's like it's going to be tough to run away from eight thousand of them right. walking towards you and, sw- and swarming like a house or cottage, whatever wherever they're hiding. So. The scary part about Walking Dead is that there is just this, the amounts of uh, zombies that are after them. Yeah. So I think something like this is great because each individual zombie is in an, is very, very strong and yeah. um, I guess like undead too. So, um, but I think their choices of like the experimentation was great in the, in the horror sense. Cause it's like, you can, you can show someone on a doctor's table with like knives sticking out of them and it's like that's yeah. not really that scary but honestly the girl with the spine like that, uh, like, I'll yeah, that, that, again. Like, that image that was just scary that was, that was burned really cool into burn into my brain forever no, <laughs> God. forever uh yeah and also i i think it's it's also scary too just the lack of empathy from like the doctor i mean obviously he's the one who's committing all of the um like uh experiments and everything like that so but I, yeah. I always think that like the lack of remorse from someone like that is is just really scary because there were Nazi doctors like that, and I I think that those people are just like the evilest because they're the ones who are willing to to get all those things done. I, I think that's super scary. Yeah, actually, you know what? Another I guess scary element about the movie is that even though uh, this is a, there's a lot of revisionist history here, and you know, of course they're like adding this element in, and like all right, we know this didn't like happen this way, but here's a take. That seems like it could have though. <laughs> like, like it seems like it could have been I realistic know, in some I way. Know. And like that is what I think yeah. is kind of makes it makes the movie really work too. It's like, all right, yeah, they really like kind of throw in this curveball here, but I was like, also not far fetched. <laughs> like yeah. whatsoever. And the reason that and the reason that and I, I like that too, because then the sacrifice means it's like, oh, like this could have happened, and the reason we didn't hear about it is because they destroyed all the, the evidence, evidence and they yeah. burned the lab down and that kind of thing. So it's like yeah. this could have been something that was kept quiet. Um, and so I, I, I mean, obviously not realistic, but I, I know what you're trying to yeah, say. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, they're like, all right, well, I, I not too far like, out, out of the realm, it. out of the realm of possibility. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, oh, actually, you know what? Also, uh, when you were talking about the zombie stuff, I guess one of the scariest things about them is that usually they can't really be reasoned with. They only have one goal and one intention and that's to, yeah, you can't no, like, talk down. You know, that, yeah, and I think that's like scary. Like they, they only want to like fucking, I guess, usually eat your brains and like all the other stuff in the traditional like zombie movies. Uh, yeah, I, you know, I guess in this situation, uh, the undead, like 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 when Captain Waffner transforms, he's still. I guess that's a good reason. I guess that it's a good reason not to really uh, compare it to like most zombie stuff because he can still has there's like a brain there still. Like it's not he's still like a functioning yeah. like. And that's also scary. <laughs> that is like not only is he well, not only was yeah. he frightening already, but and this transformation is also very gross and frightening. But yeah, there is like intelligence still there, and intelligence to go along yeah. with strength as well. So like that's another yeah. like aspect of it I, that I appreciate. That was like a little different uh, from most movies like this. And I think that's cool too because it shows like why they need to experiment because it's not going to be the same for everyone. So it's like maybe if you're already insanely evil and crazy and smart then maybe this thing gives you super strength instead of um someone who might not be in that sense and like they just kind of turn into a crazy person like um the the soldier that we see yeah well, yeah and that's what like you're, you're right too because like you know it uh when chase like you know it he had a very uh <laughs> different reaction of course uh that was much different from yeah. like, what, what happened to you know like often or something so yeah it it really could just be like kind of your body chemistry that makes how this works uh, you yeah. might work differently. I thought the effects on his transformation were yeah, great. they were it, it, they were really good, and it, it really did make my skin crawl. It was like so the fucking I love scary movies, but like body horror, like any like transformation stuff where it's like stuff that's crawling around inside, like the neck are coming are, like out. popping yeah, out. <laughs> it's probably the it always freaks me out. Like I hate like uh like I love I don't know if you've ever seen The Fly with Jeff Goldblum and Gina Davis like from the okay 80s. yeah 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 uh but. 
I love that movie, but I usually watch it like kind of like with one eye because it's like it's, it's, yeah, because it's, like disturbing. they they milk Jeff Goldblum's transformation in that movie. It's like it's not like a quick like oh now he's like a ugly little fly beast. It's like gradual. His body is deteriorating, and God bless Gina Davis because I think only a white woman would say with someone like that after he's like slowly falling apart and turning into an insect. <laughs> she's like she's like oh my god I still, I, I still love you I still care about you. You're like no look at him. Are you serious? Like why do you <laughs> look at him? Are you like, crazy? And, dude, and then he like throws up like all that white stuff and like it like can burn off people. Oh, like yeah, uh, that, yeah. So like body horror all it always that, freaks that, me out. That's like, <laughs> I for me it's like the disgusting horror like anything with like puke and like bodily fluids and stuff like that like i'm that's the stuff that kind of just makes my skin crawl because yeah. it's just gross it's not really scary it's just like disgusting yeah <laughs> that's i don't know man you start like, when you see like stuff in movies where it's like stuff moving around inside them and like you immediately feel like oh like, you almost oh, like yeah. want to tap your arm like Ugh. <laughs> we were talking about that with prometheus we were talking about that yeah. with prometheus it's like it's scary when something is inside of you or like there's like your body is yeah it's like changing it is a little yeah, scary. that I mean that Prometheus scene, like watching that it rise, and like, uh, and like ugh, oh yeah, they're so gross. Oh it, gosh, I mean, I respect, mm. I respect good effects like that because at least, I mean, I guess that's the point. It's supposed to make you like really. I thought it was really well. It, it was pretty seamless. Like it didn't look like. I mean, obviously, it looked crazy and it looked yeah. insane and and disturbing, but it's like it didn't really. I, I don't want to say it looked unrealistic. I think they did a really good job to make it seem like this is a, a horrible like transformation that's happening. So I, it, for me, I thought it was really well executed. Yeah. I thought so too. Uh, actually the whole, I mean the whole movie, I mean, I guess I was just, it was funny because when I popped, when I popped it in, it was like, all right, we'll, we'll see what uh craziness Owen was watching like an hour or some change before I started it. And I think yeah. I, I think I was expecting going in just to like really watch like a dumb horror. I mean, I, not to say that you like dumb movies, but I thought I'd just be like, you know, nothing I would, <laughs> nothing, nothing I would take seriously. I thought it'd be more like the horror because I didn't really know much about the movie at all. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and the fact that, like, you know, what the first forty-five minutes, maybe, like, a lot of it plays like so straight and so uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and I there's, there's no like, um, there's no uh, what's it called like fantastical stuff in the beginning, until, like, like an hour in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you know you kind of forget like oh maybe I'm, well I'm watching a really intense war movie. Okay, never mind. Uh, y- yeah, and like then it has like of course the bait and switch with the experimentations and all that stuff. But um, I think that's what pleasantly surprised me. I really thought I was going to be like all right, I'm just going to watch some kind of like because based on reviews, I actually uh, messaged uh, someone on G rolls that I was like has like asked them if they had seen the movie before. And uh, they had, and they really liked it. And that was one of the things that they said too. They were like, it, "It's a lot." They were like, "I hate to say serious, but like it, it actually came off much more uh, than." I think, I think it's pretty most, smart. Yeah, it's really smart and well done. And that's what's really uh, surprised me that, like I said earlier, I was more, I was really more engaged by like its depiction of war, and then also being in the same space with these characters, which I thought were really their relationships. I all, yeah. I all bought them. I, I bought every relationship in the movie and thought that the actors played off each other really well. And that was just a combination of really good acting and good writing too. Um, yeah. Because you do, I mean, the worst thing, I mean, some horror movies, yes, it's, it's fun, I guess, to like up the body count and not really care about who these people are. I, I can still like find yeah. that, find that fun. It's, it's super easy to fall yeah. into that. Yeah. I can find that fun, but like, I would prefer like if so-and-so dies that like, I cared about them. Like I want them like, Oh, that sucks. That like, this person's uh is getting killed in this. Like you want to like you want people to root for and like hope they survive. And I thought I thought this movie did a really good job of uh, maintaining a lot of characters that you're like, all right, I'm really invested in uh yeah. their, their survival. And knowing that you knowing that everyone's not gonna get out of course like not in a movie like this, but uh you know something <laughs> yeah, not yeah. in a movie like this at all. But yeah, I mean if I could sell it to anyone who's like if they're on the fence about seeing it or if they haven't seen it, um I think you'll be pleasantly surprised by just how uh, how well written it was, and then how well executed it was. Yeah, because uh, uh, it's hard I, it's, I, it's I, hard I, to blend so many I, genres, man. Dude, it's really hard to do that well. Yeah, it is, and I, I mean the reason that I picked it is I think that it has such a great it's it's action that's right up my alley. It's just the right amount of disturbing horror that kind of makes me sit on the edge of my seat and not really know what's coming next. 
Yeah. Um, and I, I really cared about the characters and it's, it's definitely a movie that I think is, um, if you're in the mood for an action movie, like this is definitely good because it's, I know it says horror in there and there's some disturbing moments, but I really wouldn't put this in the film, in the genre of really like a serious horror movie. Cause it really, like you said, there's kind of a bait and switch in the beginning. So yeah. if you're in the mood for an action movie, I think this is definitely one that everyone should check out. Yeah, I agree. And, uh, a really good pick too and then i again you got you got one i hadn't seen before which is great um it's funny because like on the it, it follows the it follows episode you're like i think i you know what, i'm gonna see if i can pick a horror movie we kind of jokes about like oh i wonder what he would pick and i think you just kind of like I don't think you, nonchalantly I, not, yeah one. i don't think you planned on really picking a horror movie as your next one you're like if i do i do but like uh yeah, you, pick, you picked a good one. Probably, probably one that you didn't have to necessarily watch like during the day with like <laughs> with the sun shining in. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, you weren't like too, you weren't yeah. like, you weren't like scared uh, at least. No, uh, but yeah. So, what do you, what do you think the reaction is going to be? Um, on I think I, I'd love to put up a poll and see if people like the movie because just from the, all the critics' responses, like it seems pretty like kind of across the board. Some people thought it was mediocre. Some people thought it was good. So I'd love to see a poll and see if, if people who have seen it and they like it, like I'd love to hear some, some answers for that. Yeah. I love to see it too. And I would actually kind of, I mean, I wonder if it's too early to tell it. It came out in 2018, but I wonder, this also has a, the whole time I was watching it and by the time it was over, I really got the vibe that this had all the elements to eventually, I don't, I don't know if it's become one yet, kind of become like a cult classic uh, where like it kind of gets, I totally agree. I don't think, I don't think enough later. time has passed to consider it a cult classic yeah. yet, but I can see, yeah, definitely like 10 years down the road, people being like, this was a great, great uh, small one that's like kind of can definitely be overshadowed if yeah. you didn't have a chance to check it out. Yeah, it definitely felt like a movie that people would reevaluate later and be like, oh, like, how did I miss this one? <laughs> like, like, you know, a bit. Um, yeah. Because I, I remember seeing marketing for it and I remember seeing commercials and I was like, this looks cool. Like, it, it just looks gripping and, and like great action. Yeah, I knew it. And one that like even even the trailer, it's like that doesn't really give you much, which is perfect. Uh, well, I wish more trailers would do that now nowadays. Uh, yeah, uh, but yeah, especially for action movie. I feel like I've already seen Mission Impossible: Dead uh, Reckoning because of all of the stunts. That well, I've seen they through. they they included all the major action set pieces in the trailer. I was like, I mean, I, I, know, I, I guess like, I mean that's the hook, right? That's what you want to sell it on. But I was like, you could have kept like one or two, like out so, so like, like tom cruise drives a motorcycle off a cliff yeah watch this movie i remember when when the trailer came out and jackson and i were talking about it on on the show jackson was like yeah it looks really cool but he's like i guarantee that like train setup is like part of the climax and then he saw the movie and he was like yep yeah, part of the climax <laughs> like it's like that was like <laughs> yeah they gave it away in the trailer but he was like still well done but like, but yeah i like a little bit more secrecy <laughs> to kind of, i want to be like yeah surprised by something at least uh, but yeah, but this was definitely. but this was one of them. I thought I was I was really uh, impressed by it. And I actually we will throw a poll up to kind of see what uh, you guys think of the movie. Uh, I think we've done a pretty decent job of like not necessarily on purpose, but picking stuff that's like a little bit more obscure under the radar. Under the radar. Um, I can imagine there are some people uh, in the little cinephile community that we're in that I probably have seen this and will like that we covered it and think it's a solid movie. Um, and I, yeah, I would love to hear. Actually, even if you didn't really enjoy it, I'd like to hear that too. Like what uh, didn't work for yeah, you? Yeah, why not? What didn't work for you? Um, That's the whole point. I I always like when a movie is kind of unexpected and like you know you don't really know like what you're gonna get and like oh like am I gonna like this one or not? And this yeah. this one was uh, a pleasant surprise. Uh, so I'm glad I, I'm glad it went from the one well. That one movie that you were going to do, it will be a good one. Uh, <laughs> that's, okay, I'm not even going to mention it because that's going to be yeah, one yeah, of my picks. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I, and we've talked about this one and we, we both love it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm really excited to get into that one. But, but uh, <laughs> it's like that, that, one's, that one's scary in a different way because yeah. that one has a scene. Yeah. Ooh. The opening scene. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, but I did. I, this was a good pivot, though. And I thought it was a you know, solid choice. And I always like seeing stuff I haven't seen before. And um I think oh, I, I'm always just like thrilled when I find something that you haven't seen. Yeah. Jackson and I were talking. It's like, it's always a good feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I, and you've done it a lot lately, like in general, uh, where, you know, I don't know if I should like have like some movie stuff revoked if I haven't seen it. Like, not. Nah, there's been times where like, I've never even heard of it. Like that shot caller movie. I was like, I never heard of that. You're like, ah, it's oh, so good. Yeah. That's a good one, man. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy what movies like miss. What do you think about our, um, 
I guess we're 14 in. What do you, um, I think we could kind of take a little bit of a look back. I mean, have you had some favorite episodes? I know we kind of talk about it every once in a while, but, um, it's funny. Cause like, I always love your picks. I think that you've picked some great stuff. It falls was amazing. I love better luck tomorrow. Like, um, just like so many good picks that you've had. Um, so I, I think those are, those are my top two so far that I, nice. I think we've done. Well, I do have great taste. Um, okay. Um, <laughs> uh, no, there's a few for different reasons. By the way, uh, you mentioned it follows. I don't know who exactly shared the episode in like different horror movie communities on Facebook, but thank you because I someone told me that they actually saw the episode being kind of like they're like, hey, like if you loved it follows, you should listen to this episode of this of this uh, podcast. So thank you, that's awesome. Uh, that was really cool to kind of hear that nice. and see that. Um, there are certain episodes that I think have been good for different reasons. Um, I will proudly say now even though you didn't love the movie the mr brooks episode was fun just because i still listen i go back and listen to that that was so fun uh, just uh <laughs> slowly undermining your opinion yeah. of it. You're like wait you're right yeah i just i just like to one, uh, one of the guys on uh, that falls my G- favorite thing about that too is my favorite thing about that too is when you were like they were trying to make a trilogy out of this and i was like oh my god yeah you were like, so like, like you're like what god, you're like, this out. is supposed to be the first movie of like three you're like oh <laughs> Like, and Kevin Costner was like, I'm so proud of this this project. Like, this is such a great script. Yeah. I was like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, I'll just never forget getting that message on G-Rolls after uh, or one of my buddies listened to the episode. He was like, dude, it was just so funny to, like, feel like your mind gra- – he turned your mind gradually being like, maybe this wasn't good. <laughs> like, I don't oh. – uh, So good. Uh, and then I like the Better Luck Tomorrow one because we actually, like, touched on, like, real stuff without – it being forced, I guess, because there, there were aspects yeah. of the of the movie, of course, and about representation and like, you know, that I think we touched on in a really uh, good way. And agreed. Uh, and honestly, uh, maybe because it was the first one, it was like out of the gate. But I actually really liked the prisoners one too. And it's funny because like I feel like prisoners I, is the only one we've really done that way where like prisoners we almost broke down scene by scene by scene by scene by scene yeah and with the other ones after that it, we were like yeah every movie that we talk about can't be broken down that way i mean i guess prisoners is more it's more intricate and has yeah. a lot more going on so we had to really break it down almost scene by scene um i think we did a little bit of with uh with tucker and dale too. Oh, yeah, yeah yeah, we yeah. Went through the, we, we kind of went through the whole story arc for that but i i've loved the episodes where we just kind of pick and choose certain scenes and talk about the topics like i love being able to break a movie down like that yeah because to me that feels a little like just like the way that we continue to talk about movies to this day yeah um is just not necessarily being like so what do you think about this scene so what do you think about that it doesn't feel super natural right so i love being able to kind of go and, and pick certain stuff it's, and um spoil it a little bit and uh, talk about even the ending first, if that's something that we want to touch on. Yeah. Oh, and I will say the Igby goes down when it's good, mostly because of me trying to explain Charlie St. Cloud to you and you being like, no, this sounds like <laughs> 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 what? He's like, uh, yeah. he, he plays baseball with his dead brother. <laughs> like, oh, oh, his ghost brother. Like, I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It sounds really bad on paper. I swear it's good. Um, mm. But yeah, I, I I've loved that every episode's kind of been different, and I think like in the beginning we were like when when Igby goes down was so different from Prisoners. I remember when we wrapped it up, I was like, all right, that was like kind of different from what we did for the first episode. But you're like, I think it's going to be different for different movies that we every movie talk about, that we talk about. Yeah, um, more some movies are more plot driven, and you really have to really break down the plot. Like I like I feel like if we did like something like Seven. It wouldn't just be like, oh, what's your favorite scene? What's your coolest part? It would be more of like, we'd a, have oh, go, break yeah, it down. We'd have to go through that. A psychology yeah. of it a little bit more. So, and yeah. of course, you know, we haven't really, you know, we did Tucker and Dale and Dog, but I guess we have covered comedies as well. I mean, not as like, not like a neighbors or a hangover kind of comedy, but, you know, we've definitely, it's, those are kind of movies that you really don't really break down scene by scene. But, but, but I think we got into yeah. the dog, we got into like the whole religion thing with Dogma too that actually sparked a really interesting conversation even though that was a great conversation even though that movie is played mostly for laughs but like you know the way it hopes for the religion is highly effective um yeah and yeah uh god we got i mean i think we i know it sounds like it's just i don't know i like how it's grown and 
how each episode has progressed. And, and I also love that, you know, for me, I liked whatever it's, if it's something you picked or I picked. And for the most part, it's either I've seen it for the first time or revisiting it in a different way. Like when I watched Insomnia again, I watched that in a much different way than when I watched it, like, you know, a couple of years prior or whatever. It was like, you know, yeah, looking at something like with a fresh set of eyes. And I think that's kind of what I've been doing every time we cover stuff for this. It's, uh, Trying to like, yeah, ex- definitely. I ex- love the the insomnia one was great. Trying to examine things in a different way, and uh, I do, <laughs> I do love I do love that you picked a horror movie. We are not we are not trying to secretly do like some backdoor spinoff where we turn this into a horror movie podcast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, but um, uh, definitely, I'm glad that you represented a horror movie that was much different from the one that I picked last week, which shows that there's so many different yeah. layers to the genre, which is why I think horror. I mean, of course, among horror fans, it gets respect, but horror usually has like a lot of social commentary that a lot of genres can't really uh, get away with, and horror movies tend to do that. We saw uh, we saw that with It Follows, where you know that's a much bigger uh, story about you know there's a big safe sex message in that <laughs> uh, that that you know yeah that works here, and then like you know, and then something like Overlord, where you know you take a real life real world situation and then like flip it on its head spin it into yeah a, yep exactly yeah so yeah we got some fun facts i do have some fun facts actually um it's interesting overlord was originally scheduled to be released on october 26 2018 which seems like the perfect time like it's right before halloween yeah uh, halloween but, but it was pushed back to november 9th 2018 uh no explanation really given but uh i don't know why they thought that date would work better than uh right around halloween time um, footage of the movie first premiered at CinemaCon April 2018, and then uh, the full film premiered at Fantastic Fest 2018 on September uh, 22nd. Um, Overlord grossed $21.7 million domestically and $20 million in other territories for a total worldwide gross of $41.7 million against a production budget of $38 million. Um, it actually opened, when it opened, it Opened to ten point one million dollars, finishing in third place behind the Girl in the Spider's Web and the animated version of the Grinch. Uh, like you said, I think it says, yeah, no. <laughs> that is brutal. Uh, uh, <laughs> that is not ideal. Eighty two percent on Rotten Tomatoes, based on two hundred and twenty uh, reviews. The consensus reads: part revisionist war drama, part zombie thriller. And part all out genre gore fest, Overlord offers A level fun for B movie fans of multiple persuasions. Uh, got a B cinema score on its opening day, which is pretty good for A level fun for <laughs> B movie fans. <laughs> Sounds like a throwaway line. I know. Um, uh, you know, a lot of good reviews, but there were some. I'm trying to see if they're. Uh... Oh, yes. One of the complaints, uh, Corey Plant of Inverse addressed the film's reluctance to lean into stereotypes or depict racism for the sake of historical accuracy thought that even though they thought that was like an ear, like kind of irresponsible uh, approach to kind of revise history a bit, but I, I, so. I guess not address, uh, addressing it, but I guess the star of the movie, uh, Jovan said, we're not trying to make a historical movie. Casting was less about race and more about who has those characteristics that help put together the strongest cast possible. Um, I, I mean, I don't think it was nece- necessary to. I think that's a really weird criticism to kind of fall on. But I mean, it's yeah. you know, it's not like a again, it's not like a real <laughs> war. I mean, I know, I, I know, I, we talked about how like we like the realistic aspects yeah. of it, but I think that's kind of like a little bit of a nit- nitpicky critique. That's a little bit too. Yeah, they're trying to find something of the movie. Um, I believe I have some more fun facts I can pull up. Uh, but yeah, I'm actually I was like, actually surprised when I pulled up the Rotten Tomatoes score that it was as high as it was. I was surprised by the IMDb score, like you said, like it's, you said it's like six point six. Uh, yeah, it was lower than I thought it would Seems be consider, considering uh, what the uh, critical reviews were. Uh, okay, uh, Overlord's first sequence, which sees the soldiers jumping from a burning plane, was done by rigging a plane on a gimbal, actually blowing up the front tilting it as if it were actually falling through the air and sending stuntmen tumbling through real fire. Jesus. Whoa, cool. <laughs> wow. Wow. 
Uh, the movie p- featured more practical effects rather than the standard CGI effects most movies use. This was done to get a better reaction from the actors involved in the scenes where something gruesome would happen. Uh, the clickers used love by the... Love that. Always love that. I love that, too. I, practical effects all day over CGI. That's the one thing I miss about like movies like this, like the thing that came out in the 80s. Like They, they look so much better than anything you can do with CGI, I think. Yeah. Um, the clickers Agreed. used by the squad after landing in France were called uh, crickets. Only the 101st Airborne Division was equipped with crickets, and only the paratroopers of the division received it a few days before June 6, 1944. Uh, the movie does not include any use of the swastika where it might normally be found, such as on the lighter or uh, in the credits, the Windelhorn rune is used. Uh, in an interview with Jimmy Fallon, Ryan Russell said he had mono while filming the movie and that he lost around 25 pounds. <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus. Bummer. That's no good. Uh, that's no good. Uh, this is the first movie from Bad Robot to be rated R by the NPA. I did not realize it. Wow. Oh, interesting. Uh Initially, it was reported that the film will be the fourth part of the Cloverfield film series, but on April 25th, Abrams himself announced at CinemaCon that the film would not belong to this series and did not want to tie it to that universe. I, I, oh. I the, the Cloverfield stuff always makes me laugh because, like, I love that first movie and the second one's good, but then I feel like they tried to just loosely connect them, like, oh, like, yeah, this is kind of a part of that uh, universe. Like, they did that one random I'm, one on I, Netflix. I've actually never, I've actually never, I've never seen the original Cloverfield. Oh, uh, it's well, it's really like for a found footage uh, movie. It's really well done. It's uh, and probably some of the most brilliant marketing I've ever seen for a movie because they really those trailers were like I don't even know what this is about, but I, something's exploding. Yeah, <laughs> it looks like New York's under attack. Poor New York, uh, always under attack in yeah. movies. <laughs> um, always New York. Yeah, uh, the scene where Chase's neck snaps back so fast, causing bones to stick out of his chest, was done with old school puppetry and animatronics. Jesus, that's crazy. That was a good, uh, yeah, that was sketch. <laughs> uh, uh, or, the original version of the script written in 2013 by screenwriter Billy Ray was very different in some parts than the final movie before it was changed over the years. And after another writer, Mark L. Smith, was brought in to polish the script. One of the biggest differences included only having Boyce Ford and Chloe as main heroes and far more focus on horror elements of the story. Entire third act and action scenes in the indie were almost completely different than the ones in the film, for example, boys for and Chloe were fighting against even more undead Nazis inside the church and laboratory and using every weapon they had or found trying to stop them. At one point, boys even throws some grenades at Nazis. But when that doesn't work, he has to use a giant sword to decapitate them and then uses the flamethrower to burn nice. to burn the last ones before blowing them up for good. See flame blowing them up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I guess so. Decapitation and uh, fire. Apparently that answers our question. Yeah. Oh, and the climax of the film is set in real time from the point that Ford says he's setting the explosive timer for 18 minutes until the church explodes is exactly 18 minutes in actual length. Nice. I love it when they do stuff like that. That is cool. All right. Uh, Those are some fun facts. I mean, any closing uh, thoughts on the movie before we get to the questions? No, definitely check it out. It's it's thrilling, super entertaining, and um, I think everyone should give it a shot. Yep. I'm going to concur with you on that. I thought it was a lot of fun. Uh, has a lot more substance than probably people might think it does, but it is also a fun yeah. indie movie. I mean, it's not going to break your brain or anything. I'm not trying to say that it's like a lot deeper than what it is, but it, you know, it yeah. really, uh, for what I thought it was going to be. I think an 80, 80% on Rotten Tomatoes is, is fair. I think that is actually very fair and fairly accurate. And uh, yeah, very much uh, an appropriate score. I, you know, I, I would say a solid seven on IMDb. If the, if the score was like, a, it should be a little higher. Like I think a seven uh, would be better than like a 6.6. 6, uh, that yeah, it has. I agree. It's much agree. better than that. All right. Here's some questions. Of course, one for me, one for Owen and one for both of us. Uh, this is always usually our, sometimes our favorite part of the show. Cause we like to get questions from you guys and you guys usually send in some good ones. So from Steve uh, from the LFM podcast, for Owen, would like to know: Do you have a movie that is a favorite guilty pleasure? Favorite guilty pleasure so, movie. So, so hmm. I guess. So I guess if it's like one that, like, oh, like it's bad, but like whatever, I still like it. 
Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, honestly, I love Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. <laughs> like, I think that that's one that is just like it's so ridiculous for no reason, and yeah. all the cameos with like Mark Hamill and Will Ferrell and like all those kind of things. I think that that's always been something that I, I enjoy and laugh at. Um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. That movie gets me like makes me laugh. I, the the comedy is so smart. So I guess I guess where I'm going with this is a lot of my guilty pleasure movies are. Uh, some comedies that the the jokes always hit, so I guess I'll I'll put those two out there. Uh, yeah, uh, you know what? I will never not laugh at Boo Boo Kitty Fuck from Jane <laughs> Jane. It's all like my, my line, <laughs> that line, that line always like cracks me up. It's a dumb movie, but it's also kind of smart. I mean, like that's I think it's it's funny. It's yeah. dumb for the sake of being dumb. I love Goodwill Hunting too. Like, oh, oh it's Jesus! Like, yeah. That scene is so funny. It's so good. It's a it's a fun little send up of Hollywood. I think mean, yeah, you know, yeah. Probably the last like Kevin Smith movie I like really liked too. I think I can't tell. Like after yeah. that, it gets his his lineup gets a little iffy after after that. Um, yep. From get your binge on for Gaius. Um, oh, what are your thoughts on the upcoming Exorcist movie? Um, uh, apparently there's a trailer attached to some, uh, uh, showings of Oppenheimer. I don't know if we're going to get it when we see it tomorrow. They didn't release the trailer online. They mm-hmm. released it as an exclusive, uh, to movie theaters. Someone did record it in the movie theater and I watched it on their Twitter page. It's so I'm watching a trailer. That's not the best quality because it was recorded from someone's phone. Um, yeah, I'm a little nervous. Um, so I don't know. David Gordon Green is directing it. He directed the legacy sequels for Halloween. So he did the 2018 Halloween and Halloween okay. Kills, Halloween Ends. Um, I heard this movie had some test screenings that weren't all that great. Um, so, and I think the thing is like the exorcist is like the granddaddy of like possession movies. And even, yeah, even its sequels haven't lived up to what that movie was. So to answer your question, I'm a little nervous. I'm going to see it because, you know, it's a horror movie. And I'll check it's it out. It's got to sell it to you. It's gotta, um, yeah. But it's, gotta, it's got some things to prove. I'm a, I'm a little nervous for it, especially after I heard about the test screenings. But um, hoping for the best. I never want a movie to be bad. Um, yeah. And, but, you know, there is that debate. Like maybe certain movies don't. Every movie doesn't need a legacy sequel. And The Exorcist could have easily just just let that. Left let, it alone. Yeah. Let that original movie just be the one that you know, speaks for itself because it is a classic. Uh, but yeah, they've never been able to get it right after that. I know some people like the extras three. I know there are some fans of that one that there's some pretty decent horror stuff in it, but it's hard to top something yeah. that goes as hard as the exorcist does. <laughs> like, it, like yeah, I don't it know how you top that. Yeah. I don't know how you top what that movie does and like it show you something new. Uh, but yeah, good yeah. question. Um, cautiously optimistic to answer your question. <laughs> um, all right. From Florida Men on Florida Man podcast, a uh, question for both of us. How long have you guys been friends? And did you realize that you had movies in common right away? Um, We've been friends, what, three and a half, four years? Um, almost four years, I think. Hit, yeah. uh, hitting that mark. Uh, I think the movie stuff came up pretty early because I think you already knew what I did for a living. And I think that kind of yeah, how that might have got in the conversation i don't remember exactly what the first movie conversation was that stands out but i think it was fairly early on that uh we knew we had movies in common well i think it wasn't just the movies in common it it was the kind of thing where we started talking about movies and then like two and a half hours later we realized we were still talking about movies so like (laughs) the conversation kind of just kept going there and so we realized we're like wow we like we actually have a good a lot to talk about and we have uh, a good way of um describing it and like you have really good good points I love to hear your side of things. And then I was like, Oh, you went to film school. Like, that's super awesome. Like, tell me about that. What's some of your favorite stuff that you like to, to watch. And, and then like you said, when we watched 25th hour, I was like, okay, like this is, um, he's got some good, good taste. And so like, we just kind of started swapping from there. Yeah. Um, I will, <laughs> I will, I will back up the two and a half hour conversation. One of the first conversations that I really ever had with Owen was actually at a party where there were a lot of people at said party and we, just really talked about like a ton of stuff for a really long time. Kind of forgot that there was a party going on really. Uh, yeah. But it was- <laughs> Dude, this is also true. I had just met you and you were talking about New York. And I think yeah. that we talked about that to start and then kind of like what your thoughts were on, you were telling me you were writing stuff. And so like, yeah, I, I just started asking questions about the business. Yeah. 
Yeah, so like that's how I that's how I knew like conversations would be pretty good. So I was like, if you could talk at a packed party and not get bored and like kind of forget like all the debauchery that's going on around you, that's that's some good that's yeah, some good con- exactly that's some good conversation. Uh, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah, but yeah, fairly early on, and I'm glad that we realized that we did have it in common because it led to this very uh crazy nerdy show that we have now. So like that's uh yeah the end exactly. result end result. Uh, but yeah, thank you there for all the questions. Uh, again, another good episode with you, my friend. Uh, s- sign us on out. Sounds good, guys. Thank you so much for listening to Back to the Blockbuster Presents Deep Dives with Owen and Gaius. You can find us anywhere that you want to listen to podcasts, but the best place to listen to it now is the Playlist app. Um, it is, uh, there are partners, they've been our, our good friends for a long time now, and they have an app now and, um, definitely need to check it out. It's a great interface. Um, and we're, uh, we're definitely spotlighted on there. So we uh, always want to make sure that we shout out playlists cause they're such a great partner. Um, but you can listen to it anywhere. Um, good pods has always been great as well. Uh, they continue to show us support, um, and just keep tuning in. We, um, not stopping. I have like eight picks in my back pocket now, and I know Gaius has the same. So um, <laughs> tune in in a couple weeks, and uh, Gaius will finally um, maybe who knows if we'll stay on the horror genre, but I know he's got something good, uh, good and ready. <laughs> oh, it's like coming of age. He's going to pick a coming of age movie. <laughs> I know coming of age horror movie. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, and also I want to just mention uh, before we sign off uh, that our editor uh, Ben. Uh, we've been talking to him about getting our uh, YouTube page back started up. So what's going to uh, happen soon is uh, kind of clean slated a little bit. Uh, he's going to like do some rebranding on the YouTube page. Uh, the screen that kind of like Owen can see now and I can see is going to be uh, rebranded with like our uh, back to the blockbuster uh, logo. And uh, the main show is going to have its own branding and the spinoff is going to have its own branding. So eventually, you will not only get to just listen to us. If you want to actually watch us consistently week to week, uh, you'll be able to do that. Which you know, I have, there are certain podcasts I like to watch on YouTube, and there's certain ones I just like to listen to. So uh, we want to give you both options and uh, and kind of present the video quality in the best way possible. So this is why it's kind of taking a little longer to get it done. Uh, we we also had to use different platforms that would uh, actually work. There's some trial and error. A few trial and error. This was yep. StreamYard has been working pretty good so far. This is the first time Owen's been on it, and Jackson and I have used it yeah, the last couple good. of weeks. Uh, so, yeah, look out for uh, the YouTube stuff. We'll announce that uh, very soon. You'll be able to uh, listen to us and then also watch us if you want to see our handsome faces. So, there's that. Can't uh, wait. And can't wait. And as always, uh, will be my pick next. Uh, I don't know what I actually don't know what I'm picking yet, uh, <laughs> uh, but I'm sh- I'll try to make it interesting. And, uh, it always is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not about topping each other. It's about good conversation and uh, good conversation, and good movies. So, uh, yes, uh, we will definitely see you soon. Hopefully, Owen will hop up on the main show with us again soon. Uh, I know Jackson wants to do another one with you pretty soon. Um, yeah. So, yeah, there, you, you can't get rid of us. You're gonna you're gonna have us on every different avenue. We're sticking around, <laughs> sticking around. Uh, but as always, guys, thank you for listening, and uh, can't wait to. Uh, have you uh, back for weeks. weeks? Yeah. Take care. Peace. Boom.